Well, it was recently revealed that 100 tonnes of iron dust had been deliberately poured into the Pacific Ocean off the Canadian coast. It was described as the world's first rogue geoengineering project, an example of how the Earth's fragile systems could be tampered with. Well, some environment groups want a ban on any field research for geoengineering, despite hopes that it might delay or mitigate some of the worst effects of climate change. But the recent World Bank report predicting a devastating four-degree rise in global temperature by the end of the century means more scientists are now willing to consider it. In a moment, we'll hear from one of the world's leading geoengineering proponents, Harvard professor David Keith, whose research is partly funded by Bill Gates. First, a special report from Margot O'Neill. That red ochre trail in the water is part of 100 tonnes of iron-rich dust poured into the ocean this year off the west coast of Canada by controversial American environmental entrepreneur Russ George. As soon as we did this, on one side of the boat you'd see this brilliant sapphire blue ocean and on the other side of the boat the ocean had turned to a beautiful emerald green. He says it brought the ocean back to life by generating what might be the world's biggest man-made phytoplankton bloom. Such blooms can increase fish stocks and the ocean's capacity to absorb CO2 from the atmosphere, a counter to climate change. We had vast schools of dolphins that would swim right up to the back of the boat and, and it was a sight to behold. It was a sight that alarmed critics around the world who warn iron fertilisation is unproven science that can change the chemical composition of the ocean. People did not know this experiment was going to go on ahead of time and the public was in shock and the political leadership was in shock and other scientists were in shock when this suddenly came out publicly. Russ George says the experiment was done at the request of the indigenous Haida Gwaii Islanders who were trying to revive salmon stocks. The true story is, is a really wonderful story of hope that perhaps the oceans can be recovered, restored and replenished and the fish can come back. But it's also the story of a desperate science now emerging as a serious option in the battle with climate change. It's called geoengineering. Geoengineering is the manipulation of the Earth's natural systems to ward off the worst effects of climate change, a sort of emergency backup if the planet faces climate catastrophe. It could work in two ways. Firstly, by sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere, like iron fertilisation, which increases the ocean's ability to absorb carbon, or by building artificial trees to scrub out the CO2. Secondly, by reflecting sunlight to cool the planet, such as with space-based mirrors, or by whitening clouds, or by spraying sulphate aerosols into the stratosphere to form a solar shield. There's no doubting the scarily epic nature of such interventions. To seize control of the climatic system of the Earth as a whole. This is a massive proposal that humanity is starting to talk about. Environmentalist and author Clive Hamilton has long been a geoengineering sceptic, but he says it's an option governments must now consider. When you consider the almost 